Hi, I'm Jamie Keat at Teachers Tech. Tonight we're going to take a look at an add-on called Read and Write for Google Chrome. Uh, this is a great program to boost confidence for reading and writing in students. So stick around for a full tutorial. So I'm just going to start off with some very simple features. Um, actually, I find most of the, the features in Google Read Write are very simple, but uh, some of the ones that students of all abilities can use. And first of all, let's start with the dictionary. So I have some text that I've copy pasted uh, over. And if they were trying to find the definition of different ones, if I highlight the word and go up to my dictionary, and then it gives me the definition right here. The other thing I really like is the picture dictionary here. So if I click on that, it gives me an image uh, to uh, relate to the definition here if I was having trouble with the definition. I'll just close those down. Uh, another way you can get information about a word is if you go over to the fact finder here. So the fact finder actually will bring you to the web here. So when I click on it, it brings me to kind of a research uh, topic inside Google uh, about the rainforest. So if someone was looking for more specific information about the word, that is, there's a very quick way to do it. So now one of my, my probably my favorite feature is the read back feature because um, I find it eliminates the long lineups I have at my desk all the time. And uh, so how it works is and it, in a couple different ways and you can change the settings here. So if I just go from the start here and hit play, the rainforest likely formed during the Eocene era. And I'll just pause it there. You can see if I pause it, the yellow stays there, the highlighted. But if I stop it, it goes away. Um, so if I didn't like the way it sounded, if I wanted a different uh, voice, all I have to do is go to my settings. And I can see if I wanted it all of a sudden in a UK voice. And I'll go with Serena here and I'll um, turn it fast here, hit OK. And I'll just go back to it and hit play one more time. The rainforest likely formed during the Eocene era. It appeared following a glue. And I'll just stop it there because I think you get the point of how that works. So another way we can do the read up, uh, read out is if you just go to this screenshot reader right here. So if I select the screenshot reader, I can um, now just pick a certain area that I want red. So if I highlight right there, it's going to just load it up here and just say that when sentence. The was drier in Savannah. And it will just re only say that one. So again, if I want it off, I can just turn it off like so. Uh, so those are some kind of a cool features that I probably use all the time. Uh, the students, I um, it's nice to have headphones in your class uh, so you don't get overwhelmed uh, with all the different readbacks that ha are happening and all the different accents because the students do like to change their um, the accents uh, on their readback. So another uh, yeah, cool feature I find is the uh, is the highlighting here. So if I uh, take a word like uh, whoops, I better turn off my screenshot reader here. Uh, if I uh, go over to, uh, let's say, oops, I turn on the wrong things here. My mouse is kind of stuck inside this one. I don't want this on anymore. All right, there it goes. So, um, so if I highlight a word like rainforest and then uh, go up to highlight here and then just highlight like so, uh, then uh, you can see that it's in yellow. If I don't want it anymore, I can just highlight it again and then clear the highlights. So if I highlighted a few different ones, I'll just do it in a few different colors just to give an uh, example here. Um, if there was words or I was looking for uh, to make a list from and I'll just, I'm just gonna pick two. You can see what I was trying to do. I could go through and pick a few more colors, but if I wanted to create a list on a separate page of those words, all I need to do is hit collect highlights. So it asked me what colors, I'm just gonna hit okay here. And what it's doing right now, it's gonna create me a new Google uh, doc here that shows the highlighted words that I have here and also gives me a link back to the original uh, Google Docs here. So if a student was going to do a vocabulary list from this, it'd be a great way to start. Uh, but an easier way to do a vocabulary list with those same words, I won't change that around, is if I just go over here to uh, vocabulary list and uh, this time, this will take about a couple seconds longer here, it's going to create a brand new Google Docs here and you see what it can do here is uh, still loading up here there it goes okay so it has the rain for it even puts the symbol in here and creates it in a nice uh, table format for students to get a vocabulary list so if they were going through and not understanding or if you ask them uh, even from a website they can do this and I'll show you this in a little bit it's all with the same um, icons that we have at the top but you can use it as an extension in on a website too so uh, those are some, uh, I find, like I said, really uh, time-saving features inside Google uh, Read Write here. So uh, those are some of the 
of features, very easy to use in Google Read and Write. Uh, like I said, students uh, get onto it very quickly and find all the features without explaining too much. You can just kind of show them a key thing, a few things in there. They're off to the races on it. So all these things also can work. If I go over to, I'm just going to go to Wikipedia here and uh, just show you uh, uh, the toolbar, how it works here. So in, in the Omnibar up here, if I just uh, click on the icon here, it opens up the same bar and everything can be done uh, here the same way. So if you want it read to you, if you want to make the highlights uh, in the vocabulary list, it can uh, work very, very easily. The other thing it can do, if you get to some pages, and this wouldn't be a good example of it, but if you had a, a page with a lot of distractions in it and you just want to get the key points uh, so uh, students weren't, or if they weren't distracted by everything going around, if they just click on this, what it does is it simplifies it. You can see the images are gone and it's put it into a, uh, a simpler way to read it. So maybe they're not distracted by as many things. So again, this is how I uh, just look for the icon if you have it installed uh, on, your as your, on your Chrome browser. Just click on it and you have all the same options. So lastly, what I want to show you is how it works on a PDF and just how to make sure your settings um, when, you, uh, when you open up a PDF file. So I'm just inside my Google Drive right now and I have this uh, short stories for children here that I'm gonna open up. It's a PDF file. Uh, you just can't click on it unless you have your settings set as default. So for instance, I could, uh, I can right click um, on, on this or if I was gonna open this here, um, if I just click on it, I can see it open with my read and write. So I could do that option too, or you could right click and then open with uh, and pick read write. The other thing is you could change your settings in here and go to manage apps. And then what you can do is click on use by default if you were opening in that all the time. And then so once you open up this one, it uh, it's gonna convert it with Google read write. And what you notice, uh, mo a lot of these things are the same in it. So if I just, I have my read back features uh, the same way uh, in it. Uh, if I want to hit play and have it read, uh, this is the feature that you can see how this box is opening up with all the highlight features and the translate features. If I don't want that to show up, uh, I can just turn it off right here, but I can hit my, my play here again. And there's a few, a couple other options that you have in this, and that's through, uh, you could add some annotations through uh, typewriter here. So I could just, I'll just say hello and hit this, and then there's an annotation like that. And the other way I can add an annotation, probably which way I'd prefer is through the, um, if especially if it was on someone's work or if it was on a PDF or if I asked them to make annotations, um, you know, I could type, I'll just type something again, test, test, and then I'll um, hit okay. And I'll close it and you notice there's the pin mark there and I can go back to it at any time. I can delete them like that uh, to clear them off. So again, this the features uh, throughout, whether you're opening Google Docs or if you're opening it on a PDF or on the web, uh, once you know the icons, um, uh, they work very, very well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll attach a uh, list of all the kind of the shortcuts for all the menus in the description down below. So if you ever have a question, it's just a link to uh, Google Text uh, uh, text help there. So just click on it and it will give you all what all the icons look like in the definitions. So I hope you like this uh, tutorial on uh, Google Read and Write. It's a great program to use in your classroom. Administrators for the division can push it out across um, all the computers at once too so it gets installed uh, for all the students. I hope this tutorial came in handy for you and if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel for weekly tech tips. I'll see you next week.